Oh, hello. My name's Rob. This is Cattle Rabbit Scow Model Studios. And today uh, we're going to be taking a look at the Blooded Kill Team. I recently got this. Uh, loved the miniatures. Uh, painted a few of them up, but I really wanted to paint some of the, the standard guys. And I ended up painting the uh, Grenadier guy. Um, it was really simple to do. It took me two hours. Uh, I was watching a movie at the time, so I wasn't fully committed. But I reckon I could probably paint one of these up in about an hour. Um, I wanted to go for a kind of Cadian-esque armour, whether you're doing traitor guard, the bloody themselves, or probably even some guard, uh, especially with the new Imperial Guard on the way. You could probably use this method for a lot of it. Um, but really easy to do, you don't need many colours, um, and there aren't that many steps to it either. So let's show you how I did it. So with this miniature, I'm going to do the, uh, I believe he's called the Butcher. I've left his little trophy rack separate, which I will spray a different color. But the first step really is to prime. And then what I'm gonna do is just attach him to a base. Um, I had a few questions about why I attach my <laughs> miniatures to bases at quite a funny um, angle. I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, but the first step is to prime my miniatures. And uh, we're gonna do Zandri dust for the guy. And then lead belcher for the little trophy rack so as you can see here I've, I've attached him with one foot on the edge of the base the reason why I do this is because when I put him in a paint handle which I'm quite capable like comfortable using um, he, he overhangs slightly so I can actually get to the underneath of the miniature a lot easier um, as I'm painting away uh, sometimes I find having him on the base fully it's quite difficult to work on the underside of things because the, the actual handle gets in the way. Um, what I am going to be doing in this video, I'm going to be painting the trophy rack uh, with the same steps that I do in this video, but I'm just going to be painting that off camera as there's no point really because it uses a lot of the steps. But the first colour we're going to use is Seraphim Sepia Wash. Um, this is for all the um, like the under camo bit or the, the, the cloth uniform if you will. Um, it is worth noting as well that all of these uh, paints I'm using today are from the Citadel range just because it's what I have the most of and it's um, quite easy for me to get hold of and I think a lot of people have these as well. Um, just make sure that you're applying it and it's not pooling anywhere. You don't want to slap it on. Um, just make sure it's kind of nicely spread out but it is running into those little cloth divots and recesses on the miniature. see that's the uniform done there if you wanted to leave the uniform like this you could but I am going to come back to it later um, the wash has done a lot of the hard work for us next up is um, Castellan green and this is for all the armor panels things like his shoulders chest plate um, any little kind of arm bits uh, he's got he's got one on his hand I believe as well but just to kind of sell that traditional green and beige color that the, the Cadians have. Once it's done, this took two very thin coats. Hey, um, it's lead belcher. And for this, it's the weapons, any excess armor panels or spikes that he's got coming out of him, uh, his ax type thing. He's also got one on his uh, foot as well, I believe. We're left with that. As you kind of see, there's not much more now we need to base coat in. Um, the next color we are going to use contrast wildwood once again this does a lot of the heavy lifting uh, there's not many uh, parts that require this but things like his boots um, his belts he has got some little straps on his uh, around his wrists I actually come back in I paint these last just because I can splodge with other colors and tidy up with this at the end then it's Carrick stone um, we're going to use all the uh, the wraps. Uh, he's got like one on his um, foot. So I don't know why. Um, any arm bandages he's got, weapon handles. Uh, it's all carrot stone. Uh, I really really like this color because it's so close to like Zandri dust and stuff. But because we're using different shades and making one brighter and dulling the other one down. It gives a really good effect and just shows you how versatile these paints are. Um, but once we've got that done, the last one is Kisler Flesh. And this is obviously for his hands, his head, um, 
yeah, just take your time with this step because it is the last color we're putting in. So try and be a little bit neater. If you do splodge, don't worry, we're only on the base coat stage of things. Uh, obviously bar the cloth. If you do splodge on the cloth, it might be easier just to recoat it with Sandy dust and redo that section with sepia just so it looks quite uniform. But once again, just make sure your Kisler flesh thinned with a little bit of water. I use mine on a wet palette, so I always tend to get quite a nice consistency. Couple of thin coats and you'll get a really nice solid color and it won't obstruct any detail. And that's all our base colors done. Uh, so far, so good, really, really easy. Uh, in actual fact, now we're just gonna come back in with some washes. Uh, the first one's gonna be the right and flesh shade for all the skin. And then we're gonna use Agrax Ur shade. This is for things like the bandages, uh, his weapons. And then we're gonna just go around any spikes or the little recesses in his armor panels. There aren't many of them. Um, once again, I'm using this straight out the pot on the face. Uh, and all I'm going to do is just make sure that it's not pooling anywhere too much. We just want to make sure that it's running to all the little um, details, sculpted details on his face. Um, and yeah, that's the skin completed with Reichland. And then it's the Agrax Urshay for all the weapons. Once again, I'm actually applying this with just a small layer brush, just so I can be really careful. These aren't big miniatures. You know, they're the human size miniatures, if you will, from Warhammer, so there's, you know, they're quite small. But once again, just making sure everything's been put in nicely, it's, it's not pooling or it's, you know, it's just settling well in the, um, in the place we've put it on. As you see there, especially on the leg, what a difference it's made. And really, if you wanted to, you could leave your miniature here because that's everything kind of shaded now you know, probably ready for the tabletop. However, if you did want to push it a little bit further, um, do continue watching because boy, have I got a show for you. Um, next up, Zandri Dust. And this is just to push the, um, the undersuit a little bit further and then Carrick Stone. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna reapply this to the miniature just to brighten up the, um, like the cloth fatigues army suit i don't know it's looks, it looks got like a bit of a skirt type thing going on i don't know um but all i'm going to do is just put zandri dust on the raised sections i'm going to leave where the shade has settled in any dips or creases and i'm just going to work my way around the miniature you know around his coat thing uh, any raised areas like on the legs and it's brightened it up a lot next i'm going to come in with carrick stone and all I'm gonna do is just add a very fine highlight. This is just for the, the really raised sections, like the edges of the hem and, you know, any kind of quite prominent creases he's got. And I'm also gonna to touch up the edges of the bandages. And next up, we're going to highlight the green armor panels. For this, I'm gonna use Death World Forest and then a very fine highlight of cream khaki. And to begin with, with Death World Forest, all I'm gonna do is just around the edges of like the shoulder panels, he's kind of got this nice prominent um, dip around his armor panel. He's also got a little grenade on the side there, which I'm actually gonna just base coat in with uh, Death World Forest. But as you can see, just on the sharp edges here, also like the underside, um, don't forget to do the back and things like that. And I'm just gonna kind of really carefully, just where I can, just add a nice edge highlight. Next up, Creed Khaki. Uh, once again, you don't need much of this, but I do think it just adds a bit of sharpness to it. And it's just for the little edges of the armor panels. And as you can see, that's where we are. And then lastly, it's back to Kisler Flesh. Now this step, I love doing skin. I've done videos on skin before and I will put a little video um, up in the, comment, uh, the corner thing now. But all I'm doing is coming back in with Kisler Flesh. We've got a nice bright base coat because we've base coated with Kisler Flesh. And all I'm gonna do is just really carefully work my way around all of the raised areas. I'm not gonna worry about things like um, his eyes and that for the minute. I'm just gonna make sure that all the ridges in his head cheekbones, the nose, 
it's just been touched in just to highlight it. And that's it. That is really kind of the whole miniature. Anything you do now, you can put on top of it to give your own spin on it, which is something that I really enjoy seeing people do. Um, I'm gonna add some extra little details to this guy to make him kind of fit mine. I think I might add a little red stripe. I'm gonna dot his eyes in. Um, I will just run a little bit of um, Ushabti bone just carefully in his mouth uh, for teeth. His axe, I'll probably paint uh, maybe a little bit of it red to um, just break up all the, the silver. Um, but really you can just have fun with this stage, add little scuffs and scratches with fine edge highlights and that. Um, but it's really, really easy to do. Um, I love these miniatures, they're simple, but there's a lot of character, but they're really easy to paint up. You don't need a lot of you know, paints to do them. And this is what we're left with. So as you can see, I have painted the trophy rack, um, same way I did the skin. Uh, the stripe is just Evil Sun Scarlet. I've added some Blood for the Blood God around the axe and the butcher's knife. Um, top of the hand, Ushabti Bone, just for his kind of jaw piece that he carries around with him. You can see it a bit clearer here. And that's all there is to it. You know, for, I mean, it's probably about an hour's worth of work, really, in total. I think is a great table stop standard for someone that is, you know, kind of just a, I guess a low ranking kind of guy in a, uh, a guard unit. But I really love the, the blooded models and the kill team models are rapidly becoming my favourite. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, a lot of fun putting this one together and painting these guys up. Uh, just wanted to say a massive thank you to everyone who supported the channel so far. We've just hit a thousand subscribers, so thank you so much. Um, and yeah, I'll see you all the next one. Uh, God bless and take care. Also, as I always forget to mention, don't forget to check the description because I'll list everything in there. Uh, thanks again for watching and I'll see you all soon.